paper If you want to stay alive When the trail gets rough You gotta get rougher To help your family survive You can't run around in circles Wondering what to do Someone's gotta be Hello everybody and welcome to my review of The Land Before Time 3 The Time of the Great Giving Directed by Roy Allen Smith once again, and stars the same people as before, I believe, plus a few new people. <coughs> okay, so Land Before Time 3, the third film in the Land Before Time saga, I guess I could say, because there's like 14 movies. So, the time of the great giving. Um, basically, the story is that... Um, there is a shortage of water in the Great Valley, and um, there is a dire situation in which uh, all the um, dinosaurs could potentially die. Um, the grown-ups are trying to resolve things um, democratically, but uh, the kids are sick of all the arguments, and they decide to take it upon themselves to go and find the water, and which they do in The Mysterious Beyond. However, they are being t trailed by a gang of bullies who are bullying them, and then Sarah's father intervenes in the um, water rationing, and says, oh, you've got to be tough to survive and all of that, and then um, they manage to find the water, but then it leads to a final confrontation against some raptors. Yes, so, the time of the great giving. Um, I have to say, this is immediately better than the second one. It's not as good as the first, but it is better than the second film, and I really like it. I think it's pretty solid. Um, it ain't... It, I mean, the bad news is it's not perfect. I mean, it's not perfect, but I, I'd take it over the second one any day. For me, the story is better, and there is a more believable premise to the story. There's more stakes to the story, because, you know, the animals... Well, the animals, the dinosaurs, could die, and it really... Um, there really is a dire situation, and, and it's and it's and it's more dramatic as well. Um, uh, and I really feel the sense of desperation and um, suffering from the dinosaurs as they are struggling to ration the water, and everybody is getting hot-headed. And the story for me is just more engaging, and it goes back tonally, it goes back closer to something more serious. I mean, it's not quite as emotional or hard-hitting as the first one. But it's certainly a lot more serious, and it plays itself much more straight, more so than the second one. The second one was very goofy in what it did. I mean, not to say that this isn't goofy. There are stupid moments which are goofy and which do pander to little kids, um, particularly with the songs. But for the most part, it plays itself pretty straight. Uh, so, I mean, the, the, the songs don't really do anything for me. I mean, why the hell they gave a song to Sarah's dad, I don't know. Um... And then they have a, the bully song as well. Um, the songs to me just do not do anything. They are completely unnecessary. They add nothing to the story. Um, even the kids song, like, I don't even think the singing is that good, uh, to be honest. So I think I would have just cut the songs out and just had the, had the film be, you know, without songs. Uh, the musical score is good, don't get me wrong. Um, the animation is great, and I do like all of the use of colours and the character models and everything else. Well, the character models, the character drawings, and all of that, um, which is really good. And I like the relationship between the five main kids. That that is still very good in this film. Littlefoot, Sarah, Spike, Ducky, and Petrie, all of them get their moments here. And um, Sarah's kind of having a bit of a, a problem because her father is doesn't trust Littlefoot and thinks that um, he's a bad influence on Sarah and that she should stay away from him. Though she doesn't want to because they're friends. So there's a little bit of conflict between Sarah and her father. Her father gets a bit more development in this film. Um, he's trying to help her survive, but he keeps he keeps being angry and he's not being and he's being very unreasonable and he thinks he knows best. He's trying to force her to to do things his way. And that obviously doesn't work. Um the finale of the film, the climax, um, is very, very good when we have the fire when um, Sarah and her father are trying to escape the valley with the, which is on fire. 
and then they have to encounter the raptors at the end which uh, which is pretty cool um that's a really really good sequence um and it is a good film i mean my only other sort of problem really i have with it is that sometimes like the ending of it is the kind of the message of the movie is very preachy in that you know sharing is caring you know we have to learn to share to survive and i mean we've kind of seen that all before but i mean it is done well it's done nicely i mean for for kids it's a good way to um encourage the message through through something like this something that they will understand um but it, it does it, it does feel like the whole film they're just shoving it in your face going you have to share you have to share you have to share you have to share um and as for like the the bullies like i mean i guess you could call them the villains i mean they they i mean they do turn good towards the end but they're not really that memorable. I mean, I suppose they're a little bit better than the, the villains of the previous film, but that's not saying an awful lot. And, you know, the Raptors. I would have just had the Raptors be in the film uh, from the get-go. I think just shoving them in at the end doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, I mean, I would have had them as characters. Um, maybe if they were the ones behind the water shortage, that would have helped. Um, and... Yeah, I mean, I mean, well, the final fight is pretty cool when Grandpa Longneck and Sarah's father um, all get involved in fighting the Raptors as well. So the adults get more to do in this in this film because uh, in cause, I mean they just kind of sat around in the second film and did nothing. So it's a it's, uh, it's nice to see them do more. Um, and I think the direction is better here. Roy Allen Smith definitely improved his direction. The script is a bit better as well. Um, the acting is good. I like the voice acting. Um, Scott McAfee is Littlefoot, he still does a good job, um, not keen about the singing voice, but there you go, uh, Candace Hudson as Sarah is also very good, Sarah's calmed down a bit, I mean, she's still quite stubborn, but she's, she's, she knows where her loyalties lie with Littlefoot, Heather Hogan as Ducky, she's also good, I like her, she's still very cute, yep, 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 um, Jeff Bennett as Petrie, he's fun, um, he's, he's pretty fun, uh, Rob, Palson as Spike. He's, I mean, he doesn't really say much. He just kind of makes noises, but he's good. Um, John Ingle as Sarah's father, and also the narrator. Linda Gray as the grandmother. Um, Frank Welker voices the Velociraptors. The, uh, Kenneth Mars is the grandpa, and he's very good. He gets a lot to do in this one. Um, he's kind of um, taking control of the situation, but then things happen. I think I like the sense of um, conflict in this story, in this one. It's it's really good, and it's and it's only one hour like eight minutes it's only an hour ten minutes so it moves along very quickly and it doesn't drag at all the second one had some scenes which were a little boring for me that was very thin on plot but i think this one has a better story it's just it's more polished and that's what i like about it it's better produced as well um yeah just a couple of things that don't really work but it is and it's fun you know it's a fun watch as well i could enjoy this one for fun Again, nowhere near as good as the first one, but a million times better than the second one. So, to, to kind of close off, I will give The Land Before Time 3, The Time of the Great Giving. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Well, life is tough. you got to be tougher if you want to stay up. Yeah, dramatic increase in the rating. But, um, yeah, I genuinely believe that is that is a big improvement over the second one. Okay, so, uh, <laughs> the next film in the series is Journey Through the Mists, which is my subscriber Harry Thomas's favourite sequel from The Land Before Time. So, I look forward to reviewing that one. That's going to be next. Um, but, yeah, uh, please leave your comments down below. Uh, let me know what you think of The Time of the Great Giving. And, uh, yeah, yeah, please stay tuned next time when I review the fourth movie, The Land Before Time 4, Journey Through the Mists, which was released a year later in 1996. This was released a year after the second one in 1995. So, thank you guys all for watching, and as always, I'm Mr. Tyler's 11. See ya.